just off a quiet tree-lined road in a rural part of Grafton, Massachusetts, there sits a curious destination unlike any in the area, the Willard House and Clock Museum. Built in the early 1700s in what was then the Nipmuc settlement of Hassana Misco, the Willard House is one of Grafton's oldest buildings. More significantly, however, it was the home and original workshop of four brothers, Benjamin, Simon, Aaron, and Ephraim Willard, who practiced the intricate art of clockmaking. It was at this unassuming farmstead that the brothers learned their craft before venturing out to become the most prolific and distinguished clockmakers in America during the late 18th and early 19th centuries. An extraordinary story inseparable from that of the changes and developments that gripped the region during the Industrial Revolution. Four of twelve children born to Benjamin and Sarah Willard, it is not well understood how the brothers came by their trade. Most horologists, those who study the measurement of time and make clocks, believe that Benjamin, the eldest, picked up the skill while living in Connecticut and returned to the family farm where his brothers apprenticed with him. Whatever the case, the small room where they tinkered and labored was used as a clock shop between 1766 and 1800. It is the only extent workshop of its kind still located on its original site. Two of the brothers in particular, Simon and Aaron, showed a promising talent for the craft. Simon moved to Roxbury, at that time a town just south of the growing port of Boston, around 1780, and Aaron followed him there shortly after. Although each set up his own business, they were just down the road from one another. It would be from their respective workshops that the brothers Simon and Aaron Willard revolutionized the clockmaking industry in America. At the time, a rural clockmaker would sit at his bench and make most components of a clock, while a suitable case for the timekeeper was made by a local cabinet maker. Of course, this was incredibly time consuming. Working the hard way, in the words of the current director at Willard, could only produce a couple dozen quality clocks over the course of a 20 year career. The Willard brothers, however, introduced the new productive methods of the burgeoning industrial revolution to their traditional horological work. Precast and pre-forged brass and steel components and clock sets available by order from Liverpool, England, greatly enhanced production and building better quality clocks at a faster pace. Most importantly, the brothers embraced the new idea of division of labor or as noted horologist and Willard House director Robert C. Cheney says, they made clockmaking in America a finely divided trade, just like the long practice trade in England. In fact, there are nearly 20 distinct trades involved in the production of a single tall or grandfather clock mechanism, each made by a specialist for making that one particular part. Cabinet making, carving, gilding, and dial making represented other distinct trades required for the finished piece as a whole. Rather than attempt all or most of these themselves, the brothers subcontracted specialized craftsmen, both here and abroad, to produce the high quality timekeepers that would become symbols of prosperity in the new republic. Not only did this method enable the Willards to produce countless high-quality timepieces, it allowed them to focus their own energies on crafting and improving the weight-powered brass mechanical part of the clock, called the movement. Simon, in particular, was interested in creating extremely precise and simple movements, and worked tirelessly to perfect these and thus increase their reliability. A skillful and innovative horologist, he also filed numerous patents related to his work. These include the intriguing clock jack, a device for turning a spit to roast meat, and the patent alarm timepiece, a type of alarm clock, later called the lighthouse clock, 
due to its shape. The invention that cemented Simon Willard's reputation as America's preeminent clockmaker in the early 19th century, however, was his patent timepiece, often called the banjo clock, for its distinctive shape. Patented in 1802, the banjo clock was the first eight-day wall clock built in America, meaning it only had to be wound weekly rather than daily. Compact yet elegant, Willard's banjo clocks were more affordable than ornate tall clocks, selling for about $30 compared to $50 for the tall clock, yet more dependable than cheaper Connecticut-made clocks with wooden movements. Simon Willard is credited with creating the nation's first widely available, though still reliable, timepieces. By 1810, Simon and Aaron's clocks were considered on par with those being made in Europe. Apart from standard tall clocks, Simon's banjo clocks, and their other innovations, the brothers produced a variety of devices. Three dial clocks for church steeples, timepieces for meeting houses, astronomical clocks, and even perambulators, which were primitive odometers that could be affixed to carriages. Simon's unparalleled hand craftsmanship was so sought after that during his long career he was commissioned to make three clocks for the U.S. Capitol and Supreme Court, a clock for Thomas Jefferson's University of Virginia in Charlottesville, Virginia, clocks for Harvard College, the Old South Meeting House in Boston, and numerous other meeting houses throughout New England. Today, timepieces and clocks created by the Willard Brothers are highly sought after by both museums and private collectors. Whatever the brothers' exceptional clockmaking abilities, however, they might not have become as successful as they had if it were not for the unique moment in which they lived. Just as they utilized the productive methods of the Industrial Revolution to build their businesses, the ways in which the Industrial Revolution changed early American society benefited their bottom lines. Before that time, when most people lived agrarian lifestyles, time was experienced through the natural rhythms of days and seasons. Productivity was marked by the completion of a task, such as tilling a field or planting crops, rather than the amount of time spent performing one. But when many of New England's farmers traded their plows for a place on a factory floor, the concept of hourly labor took hold. Knowing the precise time of day and measuring the passage of time by the hour became fundamental to their work lives and how they understood the value of their labor. Simply put, at this time, clocks were more relevant than ever. This new reality, combined with the rise in surplus wealth and a greater desire for luxury goods, meant that more and more Americans purchased Willard timepieces for their homes, businesses, and meeting houses. The Willard House and Clock Museum, which is listed on the National Register of Historic Places, is an ideal place to get a sense of this singular period in which the Willards lived. In the Willards' original workshop, replete with period-specific horological tools, visitors can discover how the time-honored craft of clockmaking developed into an American industry in the brothers' capable hands. The three adjoining modern galleries, which display many stunning examples of their handiwork, help illuminate the story further. And of course, the rest of the Willard farmstead has been restored to appear as it would have in the late 18th century, when the brothers resided there and divided their time seasonally between their trade and farming. The home contains original Willard family clocks, portraits, and furnishings, as well as a wide variety of American decorative arts. In this setting, the confluence of these two distinct moments in the history of the Blackstone Valley in the United States, the pre-industrial and industrial, is brilliantly clear. And the incredible story of the lives and work of the Willard brothers is right at the center of it.